Welcome to our next English Learner Portal Strategy video. Today I want to share with you some information about creating anchor charts in math. A lot of us already use anchor charts in various ways in the classroom. Today we're going to use the context of math as our example and then show you how to tweak your anchor chart to also allow for language development during your math lesson. You'll see the tips and tricks that will allow students of various proficiency levels to more fully engage in your math lesson and be part of the group and know exactly what you want them to say and do. So before we get to modeling the lesson itself, I want to talk to you a little bit about the planning. When you're thinking about your language enhanced math anchor chart, I want you to think about a couple different things. What vocabulary will students need to be successful when listening to you as the teacher, when engaging in conversation with each other, and when speaking or writing about the content as they learn? Key vocabulary, jot down that list first. Then I want you to think about what sentences will students need to be saying and practicing when it comes to talking about your topic. So for today, rounding. If I want my students to talk about rounding, then how will they do that? What will it sound like? What do I want them to say? If I think about that ahead of time and I plan what I want them to say, then as we work through our lesson and we practice speaking about rounding in just the way that I want it to happen, it will be clear and concise and happen in their speaking and writing more naturally as we move forward. I also want you to think about what opportunities you're going to provide students to use that vocabulary and use the sentences and use the language that you're giving them about rounding in your conversation, discourse. When are they going to get to use this new vocabulary and these new sentence structures? How much will they be allowed to talk? How will you provide opportunities for them to speak as much as possible so they can practice? Remember what we always say, you have to use the language to learn the language. So where will they practice? Okay, three things to remember as you sit down to plan it out. After you've thought through your anchor chart, the best case scenario is if you can build it with your students while you're teaching. So I just added the title here to get us started, save us a few minutes in class. And I'm going to use an example that one of our uh, Delaware English Learner Lead Team members created in a workshop recently with rounding and how she teaches it. And we're using her example and then building upon that to enhance it even more. So thank you to our Delaware Lead Team. I'm going to model now the process that I would use with students. All right, so today we're talking about rounding to the nearest 10. So there are a few important words here in our title. Rounding, we've been talking about for a while. And then I also want you to pay attention to these two keywords, nearest and 10. So rounding is the process we're going to use, the math process we're going to round numbers. We'll get back to that. And we're going to round them to the nearest 10. So remember in math, we've been talking about ones, tens, hundreds, our place value uh, language, our place value words. And the tens mean there's two digits. So when we talk about to the nearest 10, if let's say I have my number 47, then my 10 is going to be the one in the second spot. So remember that number, these are our tens. So this is just to help you remember that, we'll put that there. Nearest 10 then means the closest. Nearest means close. So right here I'm just gonna write closest so you remember. And let me think, what would be a good picture so we remember close? I'm going to put two people here standing right next to each other, super close. So you remember that nearest means closest. 
So we're rounding to the nearest 10. We're rounding to the closest 10. So that's our goal for today. Now how do we do that? So remember we talked about rounding and we talked about it like a roller coaster here. So here's our roller coaster. These are our supports to hold up our roller coaster. And we have our carts here on our roller coaster. Okay, going up the hill. And then we'll have another trail of carts going down the hill on this side. When we are rounding numbers, we want to take our first example, let's say uh, 84. We want to round 84 to the nearest 10. So we have to place it on our roller coaster. On the downside of the roller coaster, our numbers that have one, two, three, or four. On this side of the roller coaster, we have numbers five, six, seven, eight, nine. And remember, those are in the ones place. So I have to do this. Which makes me think there's another word that you need to know. We talked about the tens place, but you also need to know the ones place because the ones place is what's going to give us the number that tells us whether we're rounding up or rounding down. So again, you may round up or you might round down. So on our roller coaster, if we have a number like 84, where the passenger here, the second passenger is a four, and we're rounding to the nearest 10, I'm looking here. I find my number on the roller coaster, and these folks on the roller coaster are going downhill. They're going down. So if your number has a ones place in the car is going down the hill, then you are going to round down to the nearest tens, to the nearest 10. So in 84 rounds down to 80. 80 is your nearest 10. If we pick an example where your number is, let's say, we'll put one over here, um, 36. Round 36 to the nearest 10. So first step, I'm going to look at my ones and I'm going to find it on the roller coaster. So my six is over here. This car is going up. If your one's passenger here is on this side of the roller coaster going up, we're going to round up and we are going to say 36 rounds up to 40 going up to the next 10. This is our next 10. So when we're talking about this, I'm going to give you the directions and I'm going to tell you um, round the number to the nearest 10. That'll be the direction that is on your homework or on your assessment or you'll hear me say, round the number to the nearest 10. So when you see that question or you see that task, those directions, you know it means 
to plot your number on the roller coaster and decide if you're rounding up or rounding down. Once you figure that out, you are going to be working with a partner to communicate what you did. So I'm going to give you some numbers and you're going to decide, uh, do I round up or do I round down? And once you do that, you need to tell your partner whether you rounded up or down and you need to tell your partner why you decided to do that. What was your reasoning? What were you thinking? Explain your thinking for that. When you're talking with your partner, I want to hear very specific language from you. I definitely want to hear you using the words that we have on this chart. I want to hear you say rounds down or rounds up. I want to hear you say tens and ones. Those are important words you'll have to use. I want you to be able to say nearest, right? which is the closest, which is the nearest. So we're going to use all of those words in your conversation with your partner. Another term I want you to know is target number. So target number. The target number is this one that we've been talking about, the one on the roller coaster, right? These are our target numbers. If your target number is four or less, Right, there's another important word. You round down. Okay? That'll help us remember. If your target number, if your target number is five or more, you round up. Now that we have all of our vocabulary, all of the important words that you'll need to use in your conversation, I want to give you some ways to use these words as you talk to your partner. And remember, that's my expectation. I really want you to be focusing on these words and then these frames that I'm going to give you. So when you are responding, Say I gave you the number 84. When you are giving your answer, when you are telling someone else what you came up with, you're going to say, I rounded blank to blank because, that might be one way you say it, I rounded 84 to 80 because 4 is less than and so has to go down. Some kind of explanation there, right? You might also say The target number is blank, so I blank. The target number is six, so I rounded up, rounded up. Okay. One thing you need to notice here is that we changed this and this. So here I said rounding because we're doing it right now, we're rounding. That's our action word. Down here, I changed it to rounded because I already did it, past tense. So just a little change that I want you to notice and pay attention to. So I rounded 36 to 30 because the target number is six, so I rounded up. Another um, part you could add to your conversation. You could say something like I 
know this is correct because that will help your conversation. So as I'm walking around and listening to you work through this with your partner and you're sharing information back and forth, it should sound like this. I rounded 36 to 40 because six, my target number, is higher than five, greater than five, more than five. The target number is six, so I rounded up. I know this is correct because on the chart, the roller coaster is going up with five, six, seven, eight, or nine, and since six is the target number, I know to round up. And if I round up, I round up to the next 10, which is 40. So these will help you get started, but I wanna hear this in your conversation as you start talking about the math and the rounding that you're doing today. You're ready to go.